and we got you. Yo, what's going on, guys? Christian Harris here, founder of Move Fast, Lift Heavy. I've got my co-host, Joseph Roscoe, in the building with us. And we're going to get live, and we're going to go talking about these quarterfinals workouts. But before we get into that, you can find all things Move Fast, Lift Heavy at MoveFastLiftHeavy.com. You can check out our gear, our training programs, and more over at MoveFastLiftHeavy.com. Just want to give you guys a little uh, current events, what's going on, what's happening before we get into this. Just finished up a pretty solid show. Last night I watched the season finale of Peaky Blinders. Ooh. Closed out that series. Definitely a very solid show. Yeah, you I'm got getting, the I'm, looking right? like Close. got the, the, the Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely a solid show. I recommend it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that likes for there to be a few seasons of a show to be able to binge. I'm not the type to wait week to week. I can't do it. Mm. It's just, it's, it's too much waiting, you know? Mm. So what, do, what, did what you, are your thoughts on that? What did you do in the nineties as a kid? Did you not follow along with any TV shows then? I'm talking about nowadays. I mean, you you got to keep up with the times here, but mm. you know, nowadays you can you can let a show kind of do its thing, and then you can yeah. catch up. I'd love to speak to like a professional in the industry to talk about like strategy as to why you would or would not want to just like release everything at the same time or do the slow burn like the once a week, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've seen it both ways, right? Like you, you get a whole season that, that drops or you just get the week to week thing. What do you prefer? You know, I prefer all at once, but once I finish it too quickly, then I wish it leaked week to week. Yeah. You but know? nonetheless, Finished up Peaky Blinders. It was definitely a, a solid show. Really good finale. Um, I was happy with it. Yo, how 1883? How good was that show? Very good. Very Yo, good. Yo, Seth Raw, Faith Hill, and the girl that plays their daughter, whole like li light it up. <laughs> light it up. But then they have the other show. I think it's uh 1923. Something. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching it right now, but it's not as good. It's not as good. You're not no? No, like the whole, like, first off, I can't say enough about Tim McGraw, Faith Hill, and the daughter. And also, oh, I love the old man, the dude that plays the cowboy in every single movie ever created. Yep. <laughs> he is effing amazing. And the guy <laughs> who plays his, uh, like, deputy sheriff guy, like, he's really, like, all of them. The gypsy wife, she's hot as hell and, like, really good actress as well. And you're just, like, invested in, like, the journey, you know? 1920, 1923 is like, I'm just watching this poor Native American girl getting abused by this nun for like 60 minutes straight. I'm like, all right. like, And Harrison Ford, he's like super old. His voice is so gravelly that it's like- Did you get to the end? No. Okay, all so- right. get give, give it a shot. Okay, so this one's a real slow burner then because it's taken a long time. Like, <laughs> I'm not- and also the love interest between the two younger, like the that blonde haired girl and the other dude, it's not as like captivating as 1883 was as far as love interests go. Um, I'm at the point right now where the Native American girl has run away and the Native American like older guy has found her like hiding by the sheep. That's uh, That's where I'm at right now. All right, so you've got a little ways to go. Plus, they they dropped like the second half of that series, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. So no, I just want to get straight to Yellowstone. I just want to. Get some <laughs> well, you gonna have to wait for that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that I I like the way I did it, where I'm doing these two like before, so that I actually will do it chronologically in real time. You know. Yeah. But um, 
All right. Okay, so um, did you talk about pump or or what are you going to talk about? I didn't. Pump? I didn't get to pump yet. Um, uh, but, drop a comment if you're if you're watching or listening or whatever. Drop a comment. Tell us what you're binge watching and and what we need to be watching when we're recovering after training. For sure. Speaking of training, team training has been going really well. Uh, we've really found our groove on team 247 specifically. I can't really talk to to what's going on with 365, but uh, 247, we're looking good. We're feeling good. And at this point, I mean, we're kind of bumping heads right now, 247 and 365. So I don't even want to talk about those guys. Whoa, wait. Why? <laughs> It's a it's a rivalry. It's, it's Listen, it's every man for himself at this point now. Mm. We're in the thick of it. You know, I like that because competition drives greatness. You know what I'm saying? It does. It does. So day in and day out. But we've got another uh, week and a half before the team quarterfinals arrives. And that is going to be an extremely fun week, I think, going head to head in those workouts. So I can't wait for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about our transition to pump, like what we got coming up. That's a little bit different. Yeah. So on Monday, we are going to begin a new cycle of pump and it's going to be heavily influenced by German volume training. It's been around for a long time. It's nothing that's brand new or groundbreaking. It's just a proven method of gains. We are going to do this for six weeks, and the bulk days are going to be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you're not familiar with what German volume training is, it's primarily just a 10 by 10 superset, and you're going to use basically two exercises that are going to give you the most bang for your buck. So it's not going to be like 10 by 10 bicep curl and tricep push down. You're going to use your big compound lifts to get the most muscle recruitment possible to give you the most gains possible. It is not for the faint of heart. It's going to be tough, but you guys are tougher and you'll get through it. <laughs> All right. Sounds promising. Uh, cool. Well, last thing on my end is that a lot of y'all spoke up and somehow you missed our drop and, and we ran out of our inventory, which, you know, happens, but first off, sign up for the newsletter, go to move fast, go to the gear site, get that, get the first dibs on when things are released. But if you're crying, soak in that pillowcase at night because you missed our no smoke tea, you are going to have a chance to get that. Be on the lookout. End of this month, we'll be dropping Again, the no smoke tea, little fun little way of getting it. So follow us at Move Fast Lips Heavy, and you will find out how to get your no smoke tea. Or make sure to subscribe to the newsletter. And or, not and or, just and. Follow and go to the newsletter. All right, let's do it. Let's get into quarterfinals. Quarter finals workouts. Indy, workout one, we've got an ascending rep scheme. We've got a lot of squatting and we have a medley of gymnastics movements. The load on the first barbell for the front squat 225 for the men, 155 for the women. Nine handstand walk lengths of 25 feet. So that's going to get you 225 feet worth of handstand walking. Definitely going to fire the shoulders up. Going into round two front squats at a moderate weight, 185, 125. Into 15 ring muscle ups. Into your lightest front squat load, 135.95. And then a new movement seen at the open quarterfinals level 21 chest to wall handstand push ups. Now, that is something that if you 
or doing the quarterfinals, right? You need to have been playing around with that a little bit before getting into it, just to make sure you are meeting the standard and kind of getting yourself acclimated with what to expect. Now, by the time you actually get there to that point in the workout, your shoulders are going to be extremely fried. The nine handstand walk lengths of 25 feet really set the tone for the rest of the workout. You know, your shoulders are going to be pretty exhausted. So after those um, 225 feet of handstand walking, having that barbell on the front rack is going to gash your shoulders up and again, just kind of leave you in a, a pretty raunchy place for the rest of the workout. Um, to 15 minute time cap. We've had some athletes at our gym do it over the past day and a half. And, uh, we had a couple that finished and some that got to those chest to wall handstand pushups and they were definitely hurting pretty good at that point in the workout. All right, so we're just going to touch on this because most likely it's Friday, so maybe a good amount of you have already done this one. Any like, hey, if for whatever reason you're about to do this in the next hour or so and you happen to be listening to us on YouTube, what would you suggest? Any little tidbit? Some quick ones. Don't think that you have to do the squats all unbroken, especially the squats before the ring muscle-ups. Um, that set of 15 front squats is probably the hardest set in the workout, um, coming off of the handstand walks, dealing with all of that shoulder, um, fatigue that's built up and then trying to go into the 15 ring muscle up. So you're definitely going to want to make sure that if that's kind of a mid to heavy weight for you, you're going to want to quickly break that up, shake it out pick it back up before finishing and then getting into your ring muscle ups. All right, cool. Let's move on to workout two. We're going to touch on that. So workout two for quarterfinals is workout two also due in 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 12 minute AMRAP. Of eight dumbbell snatches. You're going to do all eight on one side into eight dumbbell overhead walking lunge steps steps so not for distance on that same arm then you're going to do eight dumbbell snatches on the other side eight dumbbell overhead walking lunge steps on that same arm and then another new movement for this year's online stage of competition 40 crossovers now when i initially saw this i thought they were crossover double unders which I thought would have been extremely rude, but they're crossover singles, so not quite as bad. Now, if you are getting ready to do this in these next 34 minutes and you have the RX Smart Gear Frivo rope laying around, that is going to be your best friend. That rope will not tangle up on you or kink up. If you're trying to do this and you're using your speed rope, chances are over time, after a few rounds of this workout, your rope will get kinked up and it will be ruined for life. So the RX Smart Gear Free Row Rope, not, not to plug, plug anyone here, but it is going to be the best way to get that done. Now, for some of you that are more at the elite level, you're definitely going to want to be doing those eight dumbbell snatches immediately into your eight overhead walking lunge steps. But for the the quarterfinals athlete that maybe just snuck in or maybe you're kind of like middle of the pack and you're not expecting to to go to semifinals but you want to get a, a really good score here an idea on the dumbbell snatch and lunges would be almost like a dt type of mindset where you're going to do most of those dumbbell snatches right so a set of seven quick shake out pick your dumbbell back up for your eighth rep, keep it overhead and then hit your walking lunge steps. Um, the crossovers are not too taxing of a movement, but you do need to make sure that you are technically sound. So if you think about the concept of where your hands are when you're actually doing double unders, your hands are kind of right by your hips. 
as you guys are trying to perform your crossover reps, you're just trying to trade your hands for each other as you cross over and then open back up. So you want to really reach those hands across the hips and then open back up as you're performing those crossovers. So if you're doing those workouts today, you got 32 minutes to get both done. Good luck. You got to go now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last uh, workout that we'll just like quickly glance at before really diving into four and five is workout number three. Um, how about instead of tips and tricks, what was your like, what do you think as a programmer on this one? You like, what are your feelings? So when I initially saw this, I thought the men's weight was 185 and I didn't look at the 275 and I just assumed that it was going to be 125 for the women. And I'm, I was just in my head like, this is just an absolute sp red line sprint. And then after further looking at it, I realized it's 275 for the guys and 185 for the women. So that is a little bit different. Some athletes are still going to be able to blaze through this pretty efficiently, but it's kind of a kick in the dick for some of the intermediate athletes that cannot move that barbell really well. Um, but I, I do like it. I like it. Um, it's showing that you do need to be able to move a heavy barbell without actually having a one rep max put in into the mix. Yeah. Um, and, and to be fair, like for some people, it is a one rep max. I put on our story today at Move Fast Lift Heavy about who's going to PR today because there are plenty of open athletes that might have been good enough to like qualify into the quarterfinals, but have never touched a weight like this. So I think a lot of people might have an exciting weekend where, yeah, their score is not going to be great, but they might be hitting that weight for the first time. Yeah, and if that's the case, what you're going to want to do is hit those first five burpee box jump overs super leisurely. Give yourself enough time and almost treat this like a strength session as opposed to a Metcon. Get your lifters on, your knee sleeves, have your belt ready, have your, your chair to sit in between, between lifts and kind of really take your time in between these clean and jerks. All right, cool. Let's go on to now workouts four and five, which now realistically people might be doing uh, tomorrow. You had mentioned in our text together that, correct me if I'm wrong, did you said did you say that you would do number five before four? Yes. All right, tell so, us about that first. Yeah, so let's look at number four. No, workout number four is a 20-minute AMRAP. You're going to do a thousand meter row for the men and women, 50 GHD sit-ups, a 500 meter row, and then another new movement in any stage of competition, the good old V-up. Very tough standard to be held here on the V-up. If you guys are getting into these quarterfinal workouts, please, please, please pay very close attention to the required movement standards. They're a little tricky and they really enforce you to do the V up the right way. So if you're somebody that thinks maybe you want to try to game the V ups, don't do it. You're going to definitely cost yourself some no reps, uh, especially if your video does happen to get reviewed. This is going to force you to do the movement the proper way. Now, 20-minute AMRAP of these movements, super taxing on the midline. Um, you could potentially get three plus, maybe close to four rounds in this workout. That's a lot of GHD sit-ups. It's a lot of V-ups. It's a lot of midline stability. Now, if you tax that severely going into workout number five, can you pull up test number five for us? Test number five, where there is a lot of hinging, we've got some heavy deadlifts towards the end of the workout. So we're doing 21 deadlifts, 
at a light load, 225, 155, 21 chest of bar pull-ups, 15 deadlifts at weight number two, 275, 185, 15 bar muscle-ups, into nine deadlifts at your heaviest load of 315 for the men and then 205 for the women, finishing it out with nine rope climbs. Now, if you tax the hell out of your midline from workout four going into five, you're, you're kind of, in my opinion, I feel like you're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice in fatiguing your midline going into that workout. So I would do workout five first while I still have a sense of midline. And then I would go into workout four at the end, kind of like a little core finisher to finish out the weekend. All right. Makes sense. Um, let's break down five then first, and then we'll go to four. All right. So workout number five, it is a grip crusher, this workout. What you are going to want to do, depending on the athlete that you are, is potentially break up the deadlifts. Just a quick shakeout before getting into your gymnastics movements to keep you fresher for the nine and nine at the end of the workout. Trying to climb a rope when your grip is absolutely shot is one of the hardest things you could do, I think, in CrossFit. Um, you know, I, I just remember recently the Wadapalooza workout where we had to do holds and a lot of rope climbs at a time. It was extremely hard to climb, and I'm a very good rope climber, but climbing the rope when your grip is absolutely shot is extremely difficult to do. So you might want to be a little smart here. Quick breakups on the deads and conserve some of that grip for later in the workout. Yeah, I mean, I would say for especially the mid-tier athlete, the workout really doesn't start until the bar muscle-ups. I think that's like where you separate yourself. So to like go super ham on the 21-21 and the 15 deads, I don't know if that'll be your best bet if you're not just planning on keeping that same pacing the whole way through. The elite athletes, I'm sure it's going to be a different story. The pace in the beginning does matter somewhat, but – uh, we all know that a break on a bar muscle up takes a hell of a lot longer than a break on a, on a barbell. Correct. And I feel like this is almost like 23.3 where if you're at that elite level, the beginning stages of the workout, not that it doesn't matter, like Joe said, but it's kind of negligible the the workout like you said starts at those bar muscle ups so be smart got to know yourself a little bit here and uh yeah conserve that grip mm, okay um yeah this how would very, you do this this is yeah i was gonna say like this is very athlete specific um so at my given fitness level now I would, I think I would do uh, 777 or maybe some like descending uh, three set rep scheme on the deadlift. The, the break being, like you said, just literally just to shake it out and to not overload. Um, chest to bar, I would go 1110. Uh, the 15 deads uh, on that weight change, I think I still would do three sets. I kind of like to just hang in the back as far as if you're thinking about it like a race, because in my mind, once I get to that bar muscle up, that's when I would look to put the, the foot down on the gas pedal. That's when I try to maybe bust out eight, seven. Um, and then just, I think I just grip it and rip it for the last nine and, and hope that I can really use my legs to help me out on those rope climbs. 
sound game plan from a sound athlete. (laughs) That's that's what I would do. Um, I know that some of those breaks in the beginning seem a bit redundant or unnecessary, especially for athletes like y'all. But again, I, I think that the, the intermediate athlete can game the system and catch maybe an elite, not elite, but like someone that's actually better than them by being a bit more conservative in the beginning. Yeah, it goes to one of my sayings that I, I, I tell a lot of my athletes, just because you can doesn't mean you should, <laughs> right? Just because you could do those first 21 unbroken doesn't mean you should do that unbroken. So it's kind of having that mindset a little bit to maybe be a little bit more conservative on that front half to kind of put the gas down on the, the back half if, if it's there. Yeah, and to add to that, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Because if you do, then the things at the end that you should be able to do, you, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's move on then. So I guess the over uh, overall tip on that one is to make sure you don't come out too hot and waste the grip and the uh, stamina of of your yeah grip and rip for the end. I'll give you I'll give you two more things. Um, definitely make sure you guys are wearing grips. Protect your hands on the chest of bar pull ups, um, even on the deadlifts. Uh, I haven't looked too far into the movement standards but you can use your grips to kind of protect those hands um, from all the pulling and and being on the barbell and the pull-up bar wear your belt Um, but also make sure you're using two barbells in this workout 21 deadlifts you know 21 chest to bar pull-ups if you're doing those butterfly it is not a lot of turnaround time for somebody to be changing the weights for your weight to barbell. So I would definitely have that second barbell loaded to to your second weight to make sure that when you finish your pull-ups that you actually have a barbell that's correctly loaded to, uh, to be at. All right, cool. Let's uh, close it out with workout number four. Workout four. This one's yeah. like, this is this is Mike Tyson. This is everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah, I mean, this would this one would definitely uh, hit pretty hard right into round two. Um, I'm not really the greatest at GHD sit ups, and when you think about all of the all of the anterior muscle groups from your quads to your hip flexors all the way up through your core. There's no break anywhere. Even when you think about rowing, every time you lean back for that row, you're going to be taxing your midline a little bit, which brings me to a point where you might want to row and try to stay a bit more vertical as you are going through your drive instead of leaning too far back because i've actually had workouts where i've paired with ghd sit-ups and tota bar where on the lean back of the row i'd I'd actually cramp up in my abs and then at that point i'm kind of good for nothing right you gotta kind of like stretch out the the kink that develops in the in the abdomen so For me, I'm looking at this as trying to stay a little bit more vertical in the row, using my legs and my arms, maybe to kind of mitigate some of that third of energy that you would get with the lean back, right? So maybe I'm not getting as much from the lean back, so I might put a little bit more emphasis on the quads or on the the drive with the legs and a little bit more pull with the arms because there is no other arm action happening in this workout uh ghd sit-ups i would probably do 25 15 10 
for as long as I could. Just quick breaks. Uh, same thing on the next 500 meter row. And then the V-ups, I'd probably do 15, 10. Yeah. Uh, the standard is definitely tough. Like, again, you have to. Have you given the standard a try yet? Yeah. You have to do them properly. Like a, like a pretty V-up. Knees locked out. Nice hollow body. Like quick compression there at the top. Because your hand, uh, your feet have to be above your head when your hands touch. So it's essentially doing a, a very good quality V up. The interesting standard on the way down is that your your feet cannot be below your knees. So when you think about that, your knees cannot bend at the bottom of the V up. Mm. Right. So when those when those legs come down, if my fingertips here are my feet, if I bend my knees, my feet are now below my knees. So I have to keep tension through the quads the entire time. So I like this in a way of like showing that proper technique of a simple exercise like this can be highly demanding. But I actually don't like it for the quarterfinal just because of the extreme shit show it's going to be judging wise. So I think that unless you're re requested for a video verification, there's going to be a lot of discrepancies on the leaderboard. And as an athlete that like used to finish um, respective, respectably like outside of like a regional athlete so we're talking like in the hundreds or whatever you know you really you value your placement and i think there's going to be a lot of shitty placements out there because of how the judging is going to be upheld or not you know yeah i mean it's it's kind of like the uh the shuttle run workout in the open you know what I mean? You can get people doing the standard great. on the ball or what? No, it was the, the shuttle run. There were people that were like gaming it and walking the shuttle runs and putting up these absurd scores because they were basically walking the shuttles and then like blasting out the burpees. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd have to watch that because just hearing you say that, I still would think that the walking would take way too, it would take too much time, but I guess not. When you think about how fast you can actually go, if you're doing like pop down, pop up for a burpee pull up, as opposed to like step back and down, step up and in jump and kind of do that motion. Yeah. Especially on the sets of like 20, 25 and 30. But if you're like springing up and down really quick. Okay. Well, yeah then you know power to them they they didn't necessarily cheat however people's uh standard on how they measured their hands to the bar was a, a lot of bs suspect yeah. it was it, there was some i was like wow i can't believe you posted your video because <laughs> like you would reach up and your freaking wrists would be touching the pull up bar. <laughs> um True. anyways all right uh yeah this one to me is the most dangerous of all of them because like 20 minutes is a long ass time this is a workout that is not common so it's not like you have a lot of data to like know your body so i feel like that 10 minute mark could hit and you could be like oh i came out totally wrong on this <laughs> yeah i mean if you if you follow our program you know we do plenty of ghd sit-ups we actually did one uh not too long ago it was from main site um i believe it was uh 50 40 30 20 10 calorie row ghd setup we've also done another one that was very similar to this um so you know if you follow the program you're definitely prepared for it double dip though of the via you know it's like it's the double dip action that's the mm -hmm. difference that's the difference. Yeah. Because they they both screw each other. <laughs> they do. 
This is an ancestral workout. <laughs> <laughs> well, be- looking looking at these workouts, um, I think for those that are doing the age group qualifiers and the team workouts, definitely play around with some of the more uncommon movements that they've released in these tests just so that you're you're buttoned up going into those other workouts and nothing uh takes you by surprise here all right so great segue you're a team athlete you you all have a slight advantage perhaps of seeing these workouts um just like you said if you're a team an age group a team athlete uh you do you think are you assuming that very like these movements are going to be in your workouts or do you think he'll throw a curveball? I think there will definitely be a curveball. Um we're going to see some synchro movements of all of those movements that are brand new to this stage of competition. I don't see him adding any of those in as a synchro aspect. I could see them being put in there if it is you know, a, a relay style workout. I'm talking about for teams, age group. Y'all could definitely see these movements specifically. Um, but as a team athlete, maybe if there's a relay style workout, um, we could see them. But I, I don't see any of those being thrown in as a as a synchro component. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well. So my key takeaways here, save yourself for the rope. Make sure you fool around with the V-up standard. And 1923 gets better the longer you watch this series. 100%. That's what I'm going to get into now. Uh, all right, man. Anything else before we go? That's all I got. That's all I got. Okay, best of luck, everyone, if you're in the midst of doing the quarterfinal or if you're on a team, um, you should hit up Train with CH. We have team variations of everything that Christian and both MFLH teams are doing. So if you want some guidance on how to put together uh, team training style workouts, Christian has plenty of experience um, as a three-time qualifying games team athlete that's right yep you got the one cancellation the one blip last year right three and then 2016 okay so four time sorry four time four (laughs) time four time all right and if you're sick and if you're sick of this crossfit stuff hop on that pump with ch monday's a great Great time to get started. Again, we're doing this German volume training. It is going to be a lot of bang for your buck. Totally worth it. That's the train I'm riding. I'm on uh, the pump with CH action coming up Monday. I'm here for the pump. A little bit of a conditioning at the end, you know, still get that little sweat on, but I'm trying to look good here in this Miami beach. You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell you what, a couple quick little things here. I did only half of Monday's session after my Wednesday CrossFit training pieces. And so it was five sets, 10 reps, incline, bench press, rest 90 seconds, 10 lap pull downs, rest 90 seconds. I did five sets of that. If I had to do five more sets, I don't know. I don't know y'all. It's going to be tough. Make sure you guys choose the right weights. Okay. Choose the right weight. Well, good luck. <laughs> good luck out there. Until luck, next Joe. time. I'll let you. Yeah. I'll let you know. I, I might be doing the next episode lying down because I can't even, <laughs> sit. I can't even sit. My legs are so shot. All right, y'all. Christian, have a great weekend. You too. Later, y'all. Bye.